the constitution of the republic of kenya is very clear on the election dates in this country it states clearly that the country should go for an election every five years and it's also very specific on the date that every five years in august the second tuesday that's the election date next year on 9th will be the second tuesday after we went to the polls so kenyans are supposed to go to the polls to elect their new president their new senators members of parliament members of county assemblies and governors but are we going to go for an election next year that's the question which most kenyans are currently asking and that same constitution is also very clear on postponing the election that you can only postpone the election when the country is at war the other day i saw president ru kenyatta at boni forest and i was like what can stop the president from declaring a war with somali and that would mean that the country is at war i'm just joking now yesterday there was a very interesting article on the saturday nation court gives nod to postpone election on this platform alone i once opined that it is possible for kenyans to postpone an election that we might not actually have election next year i want us to do this critical analysis i want us to look into this particular news which is emerging whether we are going to have election next year or not and why personally i strongly believe that there are emerging issues and that the elections can actually be postponed it's now possible there is no possibility but before we do that if you are watching this channel for the first time i want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button <laughs> so that next time we produce a video like this youtube will automatically notify you what we do on this channel is very simple we analyze politics in a way you can't find any other place so the best thing just take a second click the subscribe button so that you will be notified and to the subscribers i want to thank you guys for your continued support yesterday i was in a funeral attended a funeral of a young girl in homa bay county a place called Ringa Kojwach. My friend Dismas uh, Ogola comes from that area, actually we were with him. So this lady died in Saudi Arabia. This was a young girl who was in second year at Kisi University. And when COVID hit the country, everything became hard. So this lady decided, I think someone convinced her and connected her to some agent somewhere. And she found a job in Saudi Arabia. That was in October last year. In April, this lady died. She was actually tortured by the employer in April. So it had been a, a, a big issue, both locally and, and uh, internationally and I remember a member of this channel making a frantic call to me sometimes back about the whole story but I could not understand but when this month my friend called me and he asked me for some contact which I provided at least later on the body was brought home so she was buried yesterday I know so many Kenyans are outside there especially in the Middle East we want to continue praying for you guys that lady didn't deserve the kind of torture she went through. Only six months, looking for a greener pasture, pasture, gone. The family are regretting. And if that lady was advised 
just to hold on in the country a bit to complete her education, probably the story would have been different. But let us learn from her case. She was brought to the country, I think, last week or maybe this week in the middle there, and there were 18 people who were brought dead. 18 of them. So it's serious. So the government of the, of the Republic of Kenya should figure out how they can provide opportunities, job opportunities to the, to the youth. If they can't provide, let them make a conducive environment for young people to do businesses. Because, for example, if you were to give someone today 100,000 to, to begin a business in Kisumu, it's going to be very, very difficult for him or her to start a business. Well, in real sense, that's a big amount of money. That's a, that's a good money for someone to start a life. The person will go for a, a, a stall. Let's say Lake Market or Biashara Market, 8,000. These guys will demand for three months. That's already 24,000 gone. So you are left with the 76. You will go and pay the, the license, municipal license, which is 12,000. How much is remaining? And if it's stocking, what will you stock with, 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 the, with, the, with the remainder? So the government should just make a conducive environment for people, young people, to do business because young people are innovative. I'm sorry for uh, diverting, but I think it's also important just to show solidarity with our Kenyans, brothers and sisters who are outside there working. I know there are some who are comfortable. Their employers are good, but majority are suffering. Now let us go get back to this issue. Are we going to have an election? Now this the Daily Nation report, reported that the East African Court on Human Rights has given member countries the green light to push forward elections to allow them ample time to fight COVID-19, raising eyebrows in Kenyan's political circles. Deputy President William Ruto is not amused. Now, let me get now the the story, just a bit of it, some interesting part before we get into the analysis. The court ruled that treaties signed by African Union member states allow for postponing of elections in the event of a disaster that threatens the well-being of citizens, such as the COVID pandemic, which has caused the death of thousands on the continent. They are proceeding, but any government that wants to postpone elections must do so using the laws in its countries. This means that if a country, country's law do not provide for postponement, lawmakers must come up with the regulation to define and govern the process. Like what Jeremiah Kioni is doing. He's preparing a bill and he's also going to the courts so that he can seek certain answers from the courts so that parliament can actually go ahead and set up rules. And it's saying the Pan-African Lawyer, Lawyers Union, PALU, that's the Pan-African Lawyers Union, which sought the advisory opinion, had asked the court to issue rules and guidelines for postponement of elections by Africa Union members. PALU drew its membership from lawyers and law societies in African countries and has been formally recognized by Africa Union since 2006. Law Society of Kenya President Nelson Harvey said they were not part of the process. So we want to assume that the Law Society of Kenya was not part of this pro process. But there is something. There is smoke somewhere. And where there is smoke there is fire. I've maintained severally that in politics nothing happens out of mere coincidence. The Pan-African Lawyers Union went to the courts to seek this advisory opinion. Who sent them? We know that African countries and the leadership operate in this fashion. They want to use the constitution to subvert the same constitution. Personally, I would want a situation 
where we go to the polls next year without a delay even with a single day. But there are emerging issues in this country. Let me just explain to you some of the emerging issues which can point to you that clearly we might not have election. The first issue which has been emerging within the political circles is the question about the term of President Uhuru Kenyatta. There are those who argue that President Uhuru Kenyatta was elected and then after his election, there was a petition. And because of that petition, he was sworn in in January and not the way or the date it was supposed to happen. The rerun took place sometimes back. So these guys are claiming that since President Uru Kenyatta's swearing in was not pegged on the August 18th election, it means the time he was sworn in, that's when his term began. Someone is going to court on that. Which means Uru was sworn in in... Uh, we had a rerun, I think, in October. I think Uru was sworn in in January. Right? October was the day he was elected. So these guys are assuming that elections cannot happen in October. So his five years will end in October. But since October, elections cannot be held in October, it can only be held in August, then it means it will go, it will pass until October, then until the next August. Now, those are issues which are emerging. The other issue which is emerging is that the country is at war. There are those who have always advanced the theory that we are fighting a war, and that war is COVID. But the, the constitution is clear on the kind of war. So the kind of war means that Kenya is fighting, for example, with Uganda over Migigo. <laughs> Or Kenya is fighting with Somali over the boundaries, for example. But that's not happening. Or Kenya is fighting with Somali because they have allowed Al-Shabaab to attack the country, for example. Maybe because Kenya, that Kenya is fighting with Somali because of the fights along the border. The president was at Boni Forest. And someone was just joking to me that, why do you think you went there? <laughs> so that's another issue which is coming. The war. The third issue which is emerging is also the constituencies review. The constitution is very clear that constituencies should be reviewed. But it's very clear that it, between 8 to 12 years. But most Kenyans believe that it has always been done after 10 years. And therefore, we should review our constituencies before we go to the next polls. The body mandated to do this is actually IBC. IBC, sometimes back there, stated very clearly that they are not prepared and that the, the results might actually, their system might actually fail because they are not prepared. Which means someone can go to the court the way Jeremiah Kione is planning to seek for an extension of election to allow IBC prepare. And because IBC is not prepared and, they, and they've stated so, they'll go to the court. I mean, they'll also be enjoined into the case and they'll say that they're not prepared. What will happen next? <laughs> Number four is something which I think is what President Uhuru Kenyatta is holding. The Maraga ruling on parliament. Just this Maraga made a ruling that parliament as currently constituted is unconstitutional because of the gender rule. It's not meeting that gender rule thing. And Maraga, through that adversary opinion, asked or requested President Uru Kenyatta to dissolve parliament. The question is, 
If Maraga as the chief justice then requested the president Uru Kenyatta, requested President Uru Kenyatta to dissolve parliament without giving the time frame when that parliament can be dissolved, what do you think stops President Uru Kenyatta from waking up tomorrow and just decides to dissolve parliament? Then after dissolving parliament, someone will go to court and an interpretation will be made. Because even if you won't dissolve that parliament, it means someone can go to court again on the basis that parliament as currently constituted is unconstitutional and therefore the budget they passed, which gives IBC the money to conduct elections, is unconstitutional. The courts will make a ruling just based on that alone. So we have those emerging issues. But let me ask you a question. Do you think, do you think constitutionally it can be possible to postpone the election? Because the constitution is clear on how that can be done. I think it's possible. Number one, members of parliament, who are the lawmakers, are disparate. If you ask any member of parliament today, 12 months through the election, I think it's almost 11 months now, they are not ready for election. If you are to add them three months, they will do. And you also know that in this country, politicians consider their interest first. Their interest is that if you can add them six months to stay on, if, you can, if the constitution can add them one more year to stay on, they will choose that. Whether they are in Tanga Tanga, whether they are in ODM, whether they are in Jubilee, whether in UDA, they will. They can speak out there. I've seen uh, allies of the deputy president making noise how the elections cannot be postponed. Those same members of parliament will be the first to cast the yes vote to this. Number two is the hardship. Politics is about interest. If postponing the election is going to serve the interest of Raila Odinga and the interest of Raila of President Ru Kenyatta, the interest of Kalonzo and Musalem Ravadi, they'll give a yes answer. And I'm just been speculating that William Ruto ultimately will leave office. Someone is going to be appointed. The person who is likely to be appointed the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya before, and probably this is why the DP is not ready to resign, is Raila Molodinga. Or do I do a video on, the, on why I think Raila Molodinga will be appointed the deputy president? Raila Molodinga. And that's why ODM and Jubilee are entering into that coalition agreement. So if they have coalition agreement, then it means Raila can serve in government. But without that, it can't happen. So the handshake has the numbers in parliament. They've proved it before. So they can easily pass it. And number three, I was talking of Uru Kenyatta dissolving parliament based on Maraga ruling. Can happen. And lastly is the courts. Someone can go to the courts. Because the courts will not look at politics, they will not look at any other thing. The courts will only look at one thing. The courts will look at the law. If they'll be convinced that the country is not ready for election, they'll vote yes. They'll, they, 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 that's what they'll say. Like the interpretation Jeremiah Kuhn is giving. So courts can also just grant these guys their wish. I don't know what you think. <laughs> Let me hear your thoughts on this matter. But again, if you're watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click subscribe button, so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue. Thank you guys for your continued support. I love you guys. Bye-bye.